Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Tackling Sport Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Hussey, joined alongside me by my brother, Daniel. How's it going? And also joining us on the show is Brian Dowling. How are you, lads? <clears throat> it's getting close to that time of year, Dan, when um, the ground starts to harden and we have a lot of sport coming our way. We had a busy weekend of sport this weekend. In golf, you've got the Masters and the players coming up. In football, you've got the Champions League, the GA Championships are starting to get underway and the Cheltenham Festival is upon us. Yeah, it's that time of year, isn't it? I remember talking about it this time last year on the podcast. It's probably the best time of year, this February, March, sorry, March, April sort of time because the Premier League's coming to the end. So it's still got the Premier League. The gas season hasn't quite kicked off. So you have the leagues, you have Cheltenham, you have the golf kicking into gear. It's just everything's coming at the right time. But for us in this part, in this episode today it's Cheltenham it's two weeks tomorrow which is pretty amazing stuff to be honest with you so um you say the ground starts to harden it does in the sports world but I guess in Cheltenham we hope the ground softens and a bit of good to soft so uh really really looking forward to two weeks two weeks and a day to the supreme yeah and that is the opening race of the festival on the Tuesday and that's the first race today we're going to look at um I suppose I'll go to you Brian to start the supreme um novices heard we're going to look at there's a lot of kind of talk out there at the moment that uh, if, if there isn't an English winner of the first, it could again be another long week for them. It could be a very long week, and uh, I, I don't know if there will be an English winner now either. It's gonna this is gonna be um, this this is a crack at race. I mean, this is absolutely it's it's it, there's about this this there's, there's definitely four horses here if they run in this race that they're going to be all in with a chance of winning. I'd imagine that Sir Gerhard would probably run in the in the Ballymore on the Wednesday, that's probably the vibe you're going to get. But you have Constitution Hill, Dysart Dynamo, you have John Bon, you have Kilcrot after throwing his name back into the hat. You could potentially have a few others here. I mean, this is absolutely fantastic. It's a pity it's the first race because it'll be over straight away. If it was if it was the last race, you'd be you'd be very happy. But um, yeah, it's a cracking, it's a crack, this is a cracking race. Yeah, absolutely, Dan. Get into it before we start looking at um who we're gonna uh, tip up to win just the first um the first race of the festival is always a special one isn't it yeah it's uh, and and to be honest we've had a kind of below par supremes over the last couple of years like i grew up in the duvan the duvan era the vator era the um all the way up with the supreme the min and altior battle i i was i remember being there and back in Maine, and again, all I'd known is Willie Mullins' favourites posing up. I just couldn't get over this monster that defeated Maine by, I think it was four or five lengths. Uh, and since then, I've learned to respect the English challenges a small, small bit. Now, it's gone back with the Irish uh, winners, but obviously we've had the likes of Shishkin beating Abercadavers and stuff like that. But this Supreme, and it, it's so hard, easy to build up racing, and they don't live up to expectations, but going through the field this morning, there's no way that this won't be a good Supreme with the likes of Constitution Hill versus Dicer, Domino. It presumes Sir Gerhard's going to the body more like uh, Brian said, but you've also got John Bond from Mickey Henderson, and you've got Kilcross, and you've got Mighty Potter in there, and there's like there's a lot of decent horses down the field that are big prizes. Then look, may go to the body more, but I just can't see how the race doesn't set up for an absolute battle. Like, and if you if you told someone, for example, you would get eight, seven, eight to one on Kilcross after his bumper performance last year. Uh, you'd be kind of mad, but it just shows how, how the season has gone. So it, it's set up for an absolutely humdinger of a battle. But the only disappointment is, like Brian said, it will be done after, what, 20 to 2 on the Tuesday is the only thing. We can't look forward to it like a Gold Cup, but uh, it's going to be something else. And it really sets the steam brilliantly for the, for the festival. Yeah, and obviously, Brian Willie Mullins um, has a great record in most Cheltenham races, but obviously won it last year, would appreciate it as well. Um, do you see him, you know, putting up a challenge again? I, uh, um, I think that uh, a lot at the start when the season started, um, a lot of people were really disappointed in uh, in Kilcross. They probably thought he was his number one uh, supreme uh, tar- supreme horse at the start of the season. Now, obviously, Dicer Dynamo has emerged as probably is going to be his his main his main um, his main asset, and I'd say Paul Townend will probably ride Dicer Dynamo, but. Um, I t- look he, with, with with his record. I think he's won like five five renewals of it since two thousand and thirteen or something like that. I mean, it's it's a fantastic record. He knows how to get them ready for this. I mean, it's it's a race. I wouldn't be too confident in having a bet in because of how how talented it looks. 
if you were to push me to select one, I do think his horse will win. I do think Dysart Dynamo is probably the bet to have. I mean, his Moscow Flyer run was absolutely fantastic and just vibes him getting off people in the racing world, talking to them from between different papers and stuff and guys just you meet on the street and even a few people I see in the pub and that just it's just they just think this lad is an absolute machine. And Constitution Hill's performance at that Sandown in January was fantastic too. But just I don't know. I don't know if that race really provides too much I don't know if it was the strongest field and I suppose you could say the same about what maybe Dice or Dynamo's bet, but I mean it's very, very hard to get away from his punches and win. I just think that that this horse is an absolute monster and he could be He's probably a champion hurdle winner in the waiting, perhaps. Yeah, Dan, Dyser down him obviously another one of Willie's um collection of horses. <laughs> I think it's 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 ever grown. But do you do you think again, like we mentioned earlier, that if if, if the English don't come out with a winner in the first, there will be a long wait for them and then it could be there is a fear, Dan, that there could be all seven races one of the days go to the Irish. I mean, that, that's how strong that their hand is. Yeah, now there's a lot of people talking like Ruby Walsh came out saying the English challenge isn't as bad this year as people make out and people are kind of overreacting to last year's. I guess those first couple of races will tell us in the sense that um, they could, you know, England could get 3-0 up and they have the Arkle favour in Edward Stone. They've just about got the uh, Supreme favour in Constitution Hill and they win the Ultima every year. So they could be 3-0 up going into the champion hurdle. So if, if somehow Ireland are 2-1 up going into the champion hurdle, then it'll be a, a massacre. But if they do get that 3-0 lead, which or at least a 2-1 lead, it might be a little bit more competitive this year. And given that, I don't know if people know this, but a lot of the British handicappers have been, um, how will I say, a little bit more lenient to the British marks um, based on last year, really. So he's trying to give British horses a bit more of a chance, and that could be a massive effect because, don't forget, Ireland really battered England in the handicaps in particular last year. So that's an interesting kind of dynamic in that sense. But here we've got two grade ones in the Arco and the Supreme, the Arco where we went through last week. But here, Constitution Hill or John Bond could give England the victory here. I'm kind of like, I'm very like Brian in the sense I'd definitely be waiting on the day for a bet. I haven't had a bet in this race. I kept missing the fancy prices on everyone, to be honest with you. Like, I was so impressed with Constitution Hill's tall work win. Like the way he just quickened up, I went, you know, straight away. That's the Supreme winner. Now, obviously, since then, John Bond's come out. Sir Gerhard's come out, who probably go by more, like we mentioned. But Dicer Dynamo obviously had his great, uh, easy victory as well, as well as the likes of Kilcroft too. So it's such a competitive race that you'd love to take on maybe the top couple in the market. And the rep, uh, horses in the Tallworth, like people get fooled every year by the Tallworth winner. It just doesn't have a good record going to Cheltenham, whether that's the track, whether it's the ground. Like it was atrocious ground, the Constitution Hill one. But like the quotes from Nico after the way he he was like pushing the the horse in Constitution Hill, and then he looked back and he couldn't get over how far clear he was. Like I can't see him if he, Constitution Hill can stay with Dice or Dino, who will probably lead here, um, and try and just make it, try and make all really. Constitution Hill's there turning going for home with one 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 hurdle to jump you've got to fancy him but it's whether he can stay with him and get his jumping right and so like it's it, it'll be set up as a match between Dyke the Dino and Constitution Hill like John Bon I've got similar vibes of Shishkin in the Supreme like I don't know if you remember Brian but like in every preview Shishkin was like written off based on his price because he was three to one uh, across the board for the Supreme now he ultimately went drifted like nine or ten in the exchanges and eventually went off at an SP of six to one so I'd say if everyone had those Cheltenham preview nights back just before the off, would say, well, he was a terrible bet at three to one, but at six to one, he's probably a good bet here. So, but we'd already, everyone already rid him off in, the, in, the, in their hair based on the price. Now, Shishkin ended up winning that race, uh, despite the fact he did a lot wrong in it. So, it, it's similar vibes with Jambon here. It's like he's very unpopular horse. He's like, um, people love because of the reputation he has. Obviously, his connection with Duvan, that people love taking him on or like saying he's overrated and he's he's done nothing wrong the only thing he's done wrong is going down to the start and getting a bit worked up in the parade ring now with a massive crowd of challenge with 60 70 000 people a day back you've got to factor that in but he's definitely got the talent people didn't like his haydock win last time he had to give away it away and he won by four or five lengths like, i don't know if that many novice hurdle hurdlers are going to win that impressively at haydock it's not that type of track it's like going to Stoke City on a Tuesday night. You just got to get the job done, and you've got those <coughs> likes of the mind that love those tracks. So yeah, and then as I mentioned, Kill Crow, Like if you if you just take his last performance, which was a really good time on the clock, he's probably a really good bet each way here. Given that Woody Mullins has said he's definitely going here now. His first couple of runs over hurdles, uh, you've got to question that. So 
yeah, and there was even a horse in Nace that won there yesterday. Um, walk in the park is it walk in the park or bring on the night? Um, and he, and straight after the race, um, I'll double check that it was bringing the night, I think. And straight after the race, Winnie Mons goes, Yeah, he's good enough for Supreme. So I think Winnie Mons could have five or six horses here, all capable of running a really good race. So, um, I definitely would wait to the day just to make sure on the Sir Gerhard thing that they don't do a last minute switch. Be like, everyone's like, like the vibes are like 99%. Sure, I think I heard David Jennings yesterday say 98% sure that Sir Gerhard's going to run in the Ballymore. Well, I've seen them switch at a lot less price, a lot bigger prices than Sir Gerhard currently at eight points here on the exchange for the Supreme. So I definitely feel it's less than that. I'd say it's like 80 20 he goes to Supreme, but they might make him up last minute switch. Who knows? So uh, I definitely wait on the day. It's set up to be probably the race of the festival, even though it's the first one. But um, there's one horse, and we'll probably get onto in the Ballymore that followed Sir Gerhard home at Leprosan. It's three stripe life. Now, I think the, his intention is he is going to go to the Ballymore, given that he's like 80 on the exchanges here. But he's definitely a horse worth keeping an eye on for place money, maybe in either the, the first two races. But like I said, I lo- I'm a massive Constitution Hill fan. I'm also a massive Billy Mullins fan, obviously. So I'm very indecisive between the two at the moment. So uh, I'm going to sit on the fence of this one. But I'm really looking forward to, to seeing the decks and uh, having a, a good play on one of the, the top two or three in the market, probably. Absolutely. Make sure to get your comments in. We're live across uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter. So get your comments in. We've got a comment here from uh, Chick P. He says, Constitution Hill is the only genuine hurdler at the top of the market. All the others, uh, he says, are real potential <coughs> chasers. Um, uh, huge scope types. Uh, Constitution Hill is compact, small, and slick. I mean, they're the two, Dan, really, at the moment you're looking at, um, I suppose, from an England point of view, English point of view, you've got constitution hill and its stable companion john bond and maybe even to you as well brian like nicky henderson uh he's got uh, again another one like willie mullins he's got these horses that can just come out and produce big results on the day are you looking if you were to take one over the other constitution hill or john bond which one would you be taking and which one would you be thinking gets over the line it's a good question though um, I I'd be I I I tend to agree with with Dan about his Haydock run. I think people are really took that a bit the, the wrong way. I t- as you said, he gave to give like five pound away to the field, and even still, like he was eased up at the line. And Aidan Coleman even came out after the race and said that he he was really he was really happy with him. Said he he, he gives him a great feeling, and you'd imagine that he'll probably ride John Bond in this race. Uh, with the you you think that uh, Nick de Boyenville will more than likely ride. Constitution Hill, I'd be very surprised if he if he doesn't. Um, I don't know. That's it's it's a, it's a, to me it's a tough choice. I, I I genuinely think he's a, he's a very lively player, and I think the fact that Constitution Hill's tallworth run was so impressive probably has him as that shorter price at the top of the market. But if someone turned around to me and said I'm going to take him on with John Bond, I wouldn't tell him he's doing the wrong thing. You know, at the price, if you were to ask me now if I, if I had a tenner in my hand, I'd probably have it on John Bond purely because of his price. Um, I wouldn't want to be back in a horse at nine to four against Ice Art Dynamo, really. To be honest, I'd sooner back a horse at five or six or seven or eight to one. So, and that if depending on the day, if all the English people latch on to Constitution Hill as their main as their main hope, John Bond could drift in the market. So he could go out to a, 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 a kind of an appealing price. That's the only that's the only thing that would lead me to want to back it. Uh, but. Um, I mean, as as Dan said already, if you were to have a bet each way, you, you'd probably have to be thinking that it's going to be Kilcroat after his last run because I think his time was like 17 seconds faster than Constitution Hill won the tollwork. Now, I understand he was eased up towards the line, but they changed tactics that day. Right? They've, they've kind of tried to drop him in behind the leader, maybe have him second or third and try and let him pick him off towards the end. That day, he just went out in front and just kind of kicked on, you know, up the back straight at Punchestown and just kept going and kept going. And he kind of hit the line really well, so... Uh, if they, you wouldn't know Dice or Dynamo seems to make all two so you wouldn't know what they're going to do here whether, if the two of them run whether they want to put Kilcroat out in front so it's going to be very very interesting this race you know there's plenty of tactics going on it's it is uh, it's 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 a bit of a minefield I think for Willie Mullins and Nicky Henderson the fact that they're going to have four or five of the top six in the market and trying to figure out how they're going to run them all but to answer your original question at the prices I'd probably side with having a few quid on probably probably having it on John Bomb purely because of his price I wouldn't be thinking now anything else just purely because of how talented some of these other horses are. Just I'd sooner have a few quid in him at seven or eight to one. And, and just the horse I mentioned bring on the night. I don't know if I was there. It's because I was there yesterday. If, if, at the prices at the moment, I would probably take a flyer in him at about 25 to one each way just because 
when with Willie Mullins' horse in the Supreme, like yeah, I think I'm, I'm just thinking the horse that springs mind Shane's Hill followed home. I think Duvan. He's, I think maybe he might be third to Duvan, but it just he, he's not sending them to the Supreme for the crack. Like do you know what I mean? He's sending them there because he genuinely thinks he'll have a good race. Blue Lord last year would have would have chased home, appreciated as well before he came down. So maybe the price is to sit on the fence a small bit, go for someone in the outsiders, bring on the night because um, we just don't know how good he is yet in a twenty-five to one. I wouldn't even do nine hundred about. I just got twenty five to one because the William Mullen said he's going to Supreme. So he's another one there that El Fabiolo as well. Like he won a punt at Tremor, I think, yeah. on New Year's Day, and everyone thought that he was an absolute. This lad could be a real Supreme contender. So I mean, he could have, as you said, he could have seven horses in this race. It's, it's that that could have decent each way chances at these prices. I mean, this is it's 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 it is it's a cracking race, really is. And if you're just last thing, if you are if you are looking for a bet at the moment, always kind of check the exchange prices with the bookmakers price because, for example, like my mate Mozzie, I think he, he's going to be the, going to the for the champion hurdle. So you can see he's like thirty three to one uh, to win the supreme uh, with bookmakers. But for example, then he's sixty one on the exchanges. So you, it just shows you that um, he's probably more like, obviously he's probably going to go to the champion hurdle. So it's good to see that it's good exchanges give you a good guide at the moment of where horses are probably going to go. Absolutely, and of course, that's a, the supreme. And Nicky Henderson's had two winners in the last six or seven years, Altior and Shishkin, and, and they turned out both okay. Um, so that that's the the first race, the opening race of the festival. Remember, if you're watching across Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, or Twitter, to get your comments in, to like and share, and um, uh, and subscribe to us uh, across. So we're going to move now to Wednesday's action and the Ballymore Novices Hurdle, uh, and I'll go to you on this, Dan. We were talking there about maybe Sir Gerhard is going to go to the Ballymore. Um, and, and if you're looking at that now, is that where your, your eyes are drawn to? Yeah, like, and again, you just on the last thing on the exchange price. So he's like decimal wise, he's three point, he's basically nine to four, 3.25 uh, across the board in the exchanges. But his bookmaker price is about uh, five to four, for example. No runner, no bet. So you can see that while it's more likely he's going to go to the Ballymore, I wouldn't have it like 98%, 2%. He does. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a last minute switch. So, like, they're the top two in the market. Dice or Dino, he's 8.8 .8 to win the Ballymore on the exchanges, but he's like 2 to 1 if he does go. So they're obviously going to split those Mullins horses up. More than likely, it's going to be Sir Gerhard here. So for this, we'll just we'll go with Sir Gerhard. And the way he won a Leopard Sound and Dublin Racing Festival, considering the horses he beat in behind, and it was really good on the clock again. That uh, you can't not be impressed by him and his the way he kind of went through that race. Now he's his hurt, his jumping wasn't as good uh, from at, at, at February in the Dublin Racing Festival as it was at Christmas. That would be a slight concern, but uh, I think the Ballymore trip, two and a half miles, it, there's less emphasis on jumping. Where's the supreme? It's go go go. You've got to be able to jump. So yeah, like. To me, he's he's the horse that stands out there. Like the other horses there, you've obviously got Journey with me, who was very unimpressive in his in his victory there last time out. It's he seems like a slower horse. I think he'll be a great stare chaser in the making. Remember that comment we had earlier, but you're trying to find the winner of the Ballymore in 2022, not the winner of the Gold Cup in 2024. So for me, uh, I think if Sir Gerhard's up against him, he just quicken away. For like, if you want to have a bet just at the prices. Um, I do think three stripe life like he followed home Sir Gerhard so, so he's well held by Sir Gerhard but over bumpers and hurdles but I would say that um, there's definitely talent in this horse and maybe the step up to two and a half miles might bring out a little bit more improvement in him so you're looking at a price of about 12 to 1 no runner no bet he's about 18 19s on the exchanges so it looks like he's going to go to the body more you wouldn't be the worst each way shout if you're looking for a horse to kind of compete with a Sir Gerhard but um, that's the way I kind of look at the race at the moment I probably won't have a bet on it um, going into the race until the final decks again, mainly because I've missed the fancy prices on both Sir Gerhard and Sir Dynamo in these races. Um, so yeah, that, that's really where I'm at with this this race. I, I like that Dublin Racing Festival form a lot from, from February. Sir Gerhard quickened away from um, Three Stripe Life, who I think that uh, those two could be the first two in my more again. Yeah, Brian, would you agree with that? I mean, Sir Gerhard is the top-rated uh, horse a 158 i mean do you agree with with daniel that that dublin racing festival form show that um everyone everyone is looking at uh at sir gerhard yeah i think most people will i think if he and he probably will get declared for this he, he probably he could he, he think he's like best price at like 15 to 8 he, he he could go off probably even money i'd say if he gets declared i'd say maybe around that sort of price um 
do I think he'll win? Yeah, I think he's probably the most likely winner. But I think that the horse I the horse I like in this race is um is uh, Jinto. I think that the 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 Lawlers and Ace winners have the last two winners have been Lawlers of Nace winners. Bob Ollinger won it and Envoy Allen won it and. I think his his run at Nace that day was was very good on uh, in January. I think he he kind of really I really liked the way he came down the hill and 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 got over the last two and and, and hit the line. He was eased down coming in. Um, Jack Kennedy was very was very very pleased with him after the race records. He's a, he's a top class horse and I think that at the prices he 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 could be he he could be a very appealable price. Um, you know people might latch. I I would I would definitely be staying away from Journey with me. I don't think his run at Nace was 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 anyway good as, as what's needed to win a race like this um and his fought even his win at christmas was was probably better but um do i think sir garhard will win he's probably the most likely winner his his dublin race festival run was good he could he could really improve now going up to the extra couple of the extra couple of furlongs but if i'm have a bet in this race I, i'd be back in at the prices at the moment i'd be i'd be back in noel moran's horse i think he's i think he's a crack and a crack and bet he could have a, he could have a big say in this and just on that, I think there's been one um, English winner in the last uh, seven or eight runs of this. I think you have to go to back to 2013, the new one, and then um, uh, Willoughby Court won in 2017 for, for David Glass and Ben Paul. And I mean, th- there is quite a few of these races that are just completely Irish dominated and they're going to be, um, what you might say, bankers for the Irish um, challenge. Mm. I mean, you're looking at a few of those races. Is is it a little bit of? There'll always be races, I suppose, that that there is strength in in the pack for the Irish. But is there, is there a few too many of that, these races across the week? Well, yeah, and that that kind of points to more of a like back in ten years ago, the best horses were in England. Like if you just look at Ruby Walsh's career, for example, in the noughties, in the late noughties, he was, you know, riding for Paul Nichols, doing a small bit for Willie Mullins. And then when he kind of realized that the best horses were trained in Clum Sutton, he basically came back to Ireland full time and rode all the good horses in Ireland. So that's just the way it's gone. Like the Irish horses are the best. Like it is actually interesting. I don't think Willie Mullins has had this winner for a few years or the winner of the Ballymore, but like other Irish trainers have won it obviously like Envoy Allen with under um Gordon Elliott and then Henry de Marmahead and Envoy Allen for the last couple of or um Bob Ollinger the last couple of years. Um the one thing about the race specifically, and I'm like so if you're probably looking for an Irish horse, then I'm basing the trends, but you're also looking for a, a quick horse. Like it's important to mention that the Supreme, because it's the first race of the festival, everyone goes off at hundred miles an hour. And you can imagine a dice or dino and maybe one or two other horses up there just gonna go hell for leather for two miles, which means it's probably more of a stayers race than the Ballymore. So even though the Ballymore is over four or five furlongs further, uh, it's a set at a much less pace. So you kind of end up wanting to have a quicker horse for the Ballymore and a staying type for the Supreme, even though the Ballymore is like, you know, half, half or half a mile further on. So that's just something to keep in mind. So you're probably looking for an Irish horse, quick horse, which is why I kind of like Sir Gerhard and possibly three stripe life. Um, there's a, there's a horse like, and I, I don't think he's going to win. Like, a horse at back, like back in October, November, was what do you want? What do you want is like a horse, another Woody Munns horse. Now, I think he'd be a really good Albert Bartlett horse, but the owners um actually are up to Ballymore. So they they want to run their horse in the race. And Woody Munns around Christmas said he'll definitely run in, in the Ballymore no matter what because of the ownership. Now, I'd be more interested in him if he was in an Albert Bartlett. And as I touched on, it's a quick race in the Ballymore as opposed to a staying type. But he's maybe a horse to keep an eye on for the future. But like he's, I think he's like thirty-three to one for this race. I just he's probably not quick enough to win this race. Um, and he actually ran in the Lawless Renaissance and disappointed behind Ginto, that the horse that Brian fancy. So um, yeah, it's an, it'll be probably an Irish winner again this year. And uh, that maybe Woody Mullins will get his first win in Ballymore because he hasn't won it for a few years, right? Yeah, I think York Hill was the last uh, winner for Willie. And uh, we got another question in um, Manella Kakuna. Um, this is a bit of a hard one. He's rated right at 147. He beat Manella Crooner, not to be mistaken, and Hollow Games at the Dublin Racing Festival. And the, the comment is here saying the hood is off putting, um, but proven at the trip. And uh, Chippy doesn't like five to four, says it's very skinny. I mean, if you're looking at, at um, some of the other options, I mean, it's probably might, might be hard to say, Brian, until we get the, the full declarations and, and, and we kind of see how the, the opening day. <coughs> Gone, but I mean, is there anything to be said at, at, at a few horses at bigger prices? Yeah, I think his vibes are more so that he's going to go to the Albert Bartlett. I think Manella Kakuna, I 
the hood the, the hood is off putting, obviously, but he doesn't he didn't do anything wrong that day. But um at the big I don't know, it used to say to you like I mean this is kind of a bit like the supreme that the winner of this looks most likely coming from the um the top of the market. I mean, there are a couple there at nice big prices. You got, I think, Sam Thomas is a horse in the called Sky Tastic who's thrown in really at the deep end, but he looks like he's a bit um progressive. If I am Maximus was second here on on um, New Year's Day to Hillcrest, that form obviously hasn't worked out too badly. Um, and you also have um, this Dan said, "What do you want?" And, and I think good risk at all has an entry in this. I don't think he's going to run in it. Um, obviously, but his running the handicap last week was quite taken. But I don't think he's going to run in in this. Um, and at the bigger prices, I mean, some of these are probably a little bit finding a little bit here in this. I think, but um, I think the night that if William Mullins runs the nice guy in this, I think he could be interesting. Um, he won at Nace um, at the end of January quite nicely coming coming away from the last I think he kicked away that was over two mile and three stepping him up to this trip probably wouldn't be too much out of his comfort zone he he hit the line really well that day it looks like he could be he, he could play a hand in, in a race like this um as probably his stable second string I think state man is a kind of a double figure price but he looks like he'd probably go to a handicap so he uh, he won it I think he won at Limerick um over Christmas or just after Christmas by about half the track um but That'd be probably one I'd keep an eye on. I think he's best price about 16 or 18 to 1. Um, and as Dan said already, three stripe life. I mean, course form is, is not too badly. He was fourth in a champion bumper last year. So he um he I wouldn't throw anyone off having a few quid on, on horses like that at those prices. But if you're looking at anything over 20 to 1 here, I don't think many of these have, have can, can have too much of a say. I think a lot of them are wanting in this. Do you agree there? Do you agree there, Daniel? Yeah, Mellow Cocooner, like, are they, yeah, it's hard to keep confusing with the two. So there's a Mellow Cocooner and then there's a Mellow Cocooner. So Mellow Cocooner is like one of the fastest of the Albert Barnett. Mellow Cocooner, who beat Mellow Cocooner over uh, in the Dublin Racing Festival, so he's probably more of a quicker horse. I don't know if it's definitely the case that you've got Albert Barnett. Um, he could possibly turn up here. And if he does, could be an interest in each way for, for Woody Mullins. But um, I like the, the Dublin Racing Festival form. Um, I liked it when I was there. Just I thought it was a really good race, and then when you when you not only watch it back, but then you get the times and stuff, and you realise that it was quite a good race. So, at the prizes, maybe three stripe life could be interesting each way, as I said. And uh, I think uh, Sir Gerhard's the most likely winner and a worthy favourite. So, um, on the um, five to four, very skinny four horse to never ran over this far. I wouldn't be worried about the trip with Sir Gerhard as that, that comment. Sorry, because as I said, it, the Ballymore, there's less of an emphasis on staying. I don't think any horse in the Ballymore has ever lost the race because he didn't stay. I just think, like, if you look at last year's race, for example, Bob Ollinger um, were, was coming to the last with Brave Man's game and Gallier de Mille, and he just quickened away from me. He didn't stay up the hill fast than him. He just quickened away. So, um, Bray, and Brave Man's game obviously turned out to be a three minor. So, that's a perfect example of last year's race. And even the year before with Envoy Allen, he quickened away just before the last. So, um, I just think Sir Gary will probably quicken away and maybe Three Stripe Live will follow him on. Absolutely. We're going to uh, then go to Thursday's action and we're going to look at the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. Uh, remember, again, if you're watching it live with us on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn or Twitter, get your comments in and we'll read them out. Um, it's Sean Hussey here joined alongside my brother Daniel and Brian Dowland. Um, so we're going to look at the, the Mayor's Novices Hurdle. and I'll go to you first, Brian. Um, there's a few, I, I suppose it's not set in stone this, this day's <coughs> others um there's a lot of people who like party central uh brandy love i think is is top of the market at the moment um where's your uh, eye drawn to again yeah another minefield here absolutely another guessing game here with regards uh which horse willie mullins is going to run in the race um i can't understand the prices at the minute i think alleg allegory devassi should probably be favored after beating um brandy loved the last day at fairy house and she looked really really nice um it was very very impressive i thought that that was a really really good run um at the way at the moment it's look he could run he could run as many of these as he wants he could run dino blue who won at clonmel um i grangie is here is about 10 to 1 but he said last week that he doesn't think that Cheltenham would be her track he, she seems to suit more around fairy house um, the horse I really like in this is Col is Colin Murphy's horse, Imp Impervious. Um, that's the horse I backed in this race. Um, I backed her a couple of weeks ago. Um, I mean, if you if you look at her form, she she absolutely she bolted up on debut with Cork, went to Listowel, beat uh, Bally William Boy over. That was over two and a half. She came back to two mile then in Down Royal in a Grade Three mares hurdle. 
Um, I mean, you want to watch the race again. She absolutely breezed up alongside, I think it was Peter Fahey's horse, sit down Lucy and just cruised away to the line. She bet Glon that day of Willie Mullins and she destroyed Party Central, who finished fourth or fifth. Now, that form obviously has worked out quite nicely with Party Central winning at the, the Dublin Racing Festival and, and, and looks a lively player in this. She seems to have reestablished a bit of form. Um, she was fifth in the in the Royal Bond of Fairy House. She was sent off seven to two, second favourite. She was coming to the last with a chance. She probably wouldn't have won the race. She clattered the last, didn't probably affect her chances of finishing in the top three. She ran on to be fifth, was bet by statuaire by whatever it was, about five or six lengths. Might have been the best Royal Bond in the world, but she but that was her first try against the um that was her first try in the grade one and against the and against the boys and she was receiving a few pounds there. But I mean it wasn't a bad run. I think she's back in Mayor's company here. She's a she's an absolutely brilliant price at like 16 to 1. Um and that's where my allegiances lie in this one. I think she's got a cracking chance. And I mean, if any trainer can get a, a horse ready for Cheltenham, I mean Colin Murphy, he's won a champion hurdle, he's won a champion chase. I mean, I think this horse is a cracking bet in this race. Yeah, Dan, it was it was first run back in 2016, and it's been all Irish winners so far. Um, you know, you're, you're looking at, at some of the names. Obviously, I think tell me something, girl, last year um, for for Rachel Blackmore. Again, you're looking at it. Brian's Brian said it's kind of a little bit hard to call at the moment, and the market kind of suggests that. Yeah, it's a very competitive race. Like obviously, Winnie Munns had a great race to start out. Or- Great record in the start off. I know Let's, Let's Dance won it um, and a few other notable on, on Woody Mullins' side of things. Then tell me something, girl winning it last year for Rachel Blackmore uh, and Henry de Bromhead. So I've, I've struggled this race, to be honest, to kind of get a, a sense of it. Like, I really like Party Central and her performance um, at the Dublin Racing Festival. But um, as far as I know, I think she's to give weight away here. So the important to notice about the mares and obviously the mares' chases, they're not grade one races. So they, um, they carry penalties, so that's important to note that when you're looking at the final decorations, you'll see like the two or three pound difference, which isn't much, but uh, in a finish, if there's a close finish, it'll be all the difference. Like uh, they say, the old school thought is that uh, one length is worth um, one pound in the in the weights. Now, that's very old school thought, but it's not many miles away from that, I'd say. So, so like, like the, the rest of them, like Grand G, um, he's kind of be, she's been running in like decent enough novice hurdle races and like, you know, the likes of third or fourth. And then maybe that form could be brought into a Cheltenham. Uh, it is interesting the comments that she probably won't be more suited to Fairy House as opposed to Cheltenham. But my understanding last time I spoke, I know I know the kind of ownership there that they, they are going to have a crack at the Cheltenham Festival. And if they do, then maybe Grangie, she could be a good bet each way. Um, Brandy Love, is, she's probably a worthy favourite and uh, what she's done. Again, she's going to be receiving way from most of these. So again, that's important to know. So um I'll be honest, like I, in this race, I do I find a struggle. I probably, you know, I kind of like Brian's case there, to be honest, which I'd probably just kind of um, come in there with you. I'm behind you. If that's all right, Brian. And maybe just kind of say, yeah, that's probably worth it each way. Bet, bet, better than what I had. But I really like Party Central. And I, when I kind of like a hor- horse, I struggle not to back them no matter what the circumstances. So uh, if she's there and she's maybe like an each way price in the day, she'd probably wear it lean Party Central for me, despite yeah. the possibly giving away weight and stuff like that. Um, on that as well, Brian. I mean, uh, it's been an interesting time, obviously for a, for a lot of people in horse racing. Gordon Elliott's coming back um, to Cheltenham. He he had that amazing um, card at Navin it was a couple of months ago where he he'd all the winners. You're looking at it for him and 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 the Morans, I think as well. You're looking at it. It's a big week for them, isn't it? Yeah, it was a year ago on Saturday since the thing last year, um, and. Uh, so um but yeah it is it's a massive week and i think um it'll be it's a and but I, I do agree with you there i think it is a big week for um nolan valerie more and they, they go here with a, with, with a couple of chances um to cheltenham i think they have like we spoke about like last week you know like probably riviere to tell in the uh in the article obviously santa here running the champion hurdle could run a good race Um then you have jit we said jinto you have hollow games is going to run we have American Mike in the bumper, and then you have this, and then you have Party Central. I mean, it is going to be a massive week. Um, I think Gord, Gordon's um plans for the week, you wouldn't know where they're going to go. Um, I suppose the Tiger Roll thing as well has probably made it interesting for him. The fact it's going to be his last ever run on the race course could that be where he's could that be the one that he wants to win? If it's if you asked him if he had one Cheltenham winner this year, who would it be? I'd imagine he's going to say it'd be Tiger Roll. I mean, but I mean, that's a very, very hard, a very, very hard decision to make, but um. 
yeah, it's a big week for them. But I do agree, it's, it is a big week for Back to the Sudden. I think their 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 last couple of years that they've done their work behind the scenes, they've built a fantastic facility in Back to the Sudden. It's it's only out the road here for me, five minutes. It's it's an absolutely stupendous facility. Uh, Apple Jade is sitting out there with her with her new foal and. Um, you know, they've they put a lot of effort into the game of racing. They've put a lot of effort back into the sport and um, they're, they're starting to see the dividends of it now. And I think that <clears throat> they're going to have a big week and this could be one of them. Hmm. Absolutely. And remember, we've got comments coming in here on YouTube. Get your comments in. Dan, do you want to have a look at that uh, that comment? I think I'm on mute there, Dan. Uh, for those listening on, on YouTube, uh, the comment says thoughts on statuary match closely with Imperius mm. who, who and like Stan maybe you can talk us through this yeah so she she, she ran behind uh, Sir Gerhard the last day was beaten uh, half the track in the end I think she was fifth or sixth so um, if you put a line through that run like I'd say she could definitely be a contender here I think the price is maybe like 30 33 to 1 each way maybe worth this each way but it is important to note like similar so that you can see like she's beaten out the gate by Sir Gerhard. a lot of these mares they'd either be running in the mares novice races or they've ha- taken on them the male their male counterparts in novice hurdles or maiden hurdles or whatever so it's, it's how much do you read into that form as opposed to the mares form um yeah like, again if you put I, i'd be worried about the run at, at uh leopard sound i'm not sure was there any excuses out last time out so um maybe two three to one might not be the worst play i wouldn't be against a lot of uh i wouldn't be against taking a big price uh on a mare here to be honest with you because like you said it, it's similar to last year's mare's novice it's very very competitive um so yeah she could be worth taking on yeah absolutely and then we'll go to uh friday's action oh, oh well sorry uh, yeah friday's action with the albert bartlett um mm-hmm. maybe brian you might run us through your your thoughts on this year's albert bartlett uh, yeah, back Barton sound lad already. I, I, I talked him up on the, on the show last week. Um, I think uh, I thought his run at Cheltenham in October was was very very good. I looked at it again this morning. He he, I loved the way he kind of came came swinging around the bend heading towards the last, and he um he actually when I, I forget which horse came up alongside him, but but when when he was challenged in the straight, he actually managed to kick on again and, and go on again. I think Sean Bowen gave him a great ride that day. I wouldn't say he's going to ride him in this. I'd imagine that Simon Torrance will probably ride him. Um, I, I was really, I was, I was really happy with that. He he won the Scottish Stairs hurdle. Then after that, by but half the track up in Musselburgh, I think that was that was probably just a pipe opener. Um, McConnell has McConnell has a uh, <clears throat> five winners at Cheltenham in his life. He's never had a winner at the festival. He was third in this last year with Streets of Diane. I think he's a good each way player in this again. Um, he knows how to get them ready. Uh, of the rest, I mean. You have a couple of interesting ones in here. Uh, Hollow Games was sent off at quite a short price for that uh, Lawlers of Nace race. Um, I think he was like four or five to one, um, seven to two actually. I just see it here now. Uh, and he was third then behind Manila Kakuna at the Dublin Race Festival. He was only about three lengths. Um, I think the extra couple of furlongs will probably suit him. I think it was two mile, whatever that Nathaniel Lacey race is two mile and six. This will be three miles. So the extra the extra step up and trip will probably suit him, and he might he might actually. He seems like a stayer. Um, the new course, you know, kind of has more emphasis and stamina, so that probably could play to his strengths. Um, it'll be interesting with Manella Kakuna. I don't know if he will manage to build in this Dublin Racing Festival win. It was he was probably he wasn't even fancied that day. He was he was a, I think he was fourteen to one. I managed to somehow have a few quid in him at that price. I was very taken by his run at Navin. Um, obviously, there's no probably better track to win at in Ireland if you want to get ready for Cheltenham than, than win at Navin. Um. The only thing is, as I said already, we've spoken about it already. Is this is the, is the hood whether he's going to wear it or not? Whether he settle well? Um, I don't know about like Manila Crooner probably is an interesting one. Like I mean, his form tied in with um, journey with me at at Leopardstown at Christmas. You know, it's it's hard to know how how you know how how good is that form? I know Kilcross was behind her that day. Uh, behind him that day, should I say? Obviously, he's not going to run over this trip. They tried him out that day to see would he stay. Um, you know, he was the then second at the Dublin Racing Festival. Like, will he really appreciate the extra couple of the extra step up here? You know, as I said already, I, I'd sooner back Hollow Games at the double figure price. I think that the step up and trip could really suit him. But Journey with me is in look, I mean, he, he's thrown into this race as well. Will he run in it? It probably looks like he's going to run in the in the Ballymore. I don't know whether he will be a stay. Will, will he have will he have to, to scope for this? Um, and the other the other Henry horse is interesting, Chantreuse. Um, I liked I liked his run at um 
I like this run. I think it was at uh, Clonmel the last day over three mile. Uh, now I know that that Mr. Fred Rogers slipped up on the flat coming in, so it was interesting to see what would have happened there. I think he was favoured on the occasion. But uh, again, I mean, this race you could easily back one at a big price in this race. Like some of the previous prices have been fourteen to one, fifty to one, thirty three to one, sixteen to one, have won this race. So I mean. You, if, if you made a case for something at a massive price here, you wouldn't be too far out of the ordinary, but I do think that um, it is strong. Again, you've Hillcrest, will he run in this race? Is the other thing they're kind of aiming to, they were talking about going to entry. Um, if he runs, I'm sure he's going to be a player. He won at the course on New Year's Day. Wouldn't be a problem to him stepping up in here again. He's an absolute monster of a horse. He's a future state. He's a future, definitely a chaser in the making, but um, look again, this is, uh, like I mean, it's 92 to field. It's, a, it's the same as the rest of them here. I mean, it's a, another bit of a, a bit of a minefield Daniel there's a big push um, online for, for Barden's town lad I think yeah. uh, if, if that's a winner um, I'd say it could be could be vocal on Twitter um, what do you think what do you think about it? is it just kind of speculation or uh, are you in that camp as well now are you no uh, ABW Andrew Blair White's been banging the drum from 50 to 1 down I think back in October November but um and I like I, I'd looked at it. He's one of those like he'd he'd win an old school Albert Bartlett like um, but I was not aware like the Supreme and Ballymore won by like high well at least up to maybe a couple of years ago won by high class Grade One horses. Whereas the Albert Bartlett, a lot of the trends kind of pointed to horses with more experience. So they win an Albert Bartlett, they wouldn't go on to be you know Gold Cup horses or whatever. Whereas maybe the the horses in behind would. It's just a very attritional race uh, on the Friday. There's a lot of uh, emphasis on stamina, even though it's three miles. It's probably you need to stay beyond that. So the Barnstown Land fits that profile uh, perfectly, like Brian's uh, touched on. I did back him fully enough after the podcast. Uh, There's just too many people. When too many people make the case, you got to at some point you got to go. You got to just draw the line and back it because you couldn't listen to them. You couldn't listen to them say one. <laughs> so uh, I'm awful for that sort of thing. Um, Shan Shoes and um, that Brian mentioned. Uh, I, I actually mentioned last week i think i backed him like terry trees before uh he, he won a clamel and beat uh mr fred rogers who obviously slipped uh, on the run and um unfortunately but uh and, and he was 16 as far as i remember last week and i just presumed he would be 16s again but there's obviously a lot of money coming from so he's about nine or ten to one um i think the money is very interesting because i don't think the form uh so basically he's run three times this year uh he lost to mr fred roger over two half miles but it's one two three mile um races over on heavy ground which suggests that he is going to stay now the, i don't think the forum's working out or is is up to much but i thought it's very interesting henry de had straight after the race saying yeah we're definitely going to go to the albert bartlett i'm guessing that those quotes and maybe a bit of money from the ownership or something has kind of contracted his price into the the eight nine or ten to one i'd be more inclined nearly to back him now with that sort of price is given that uh if he was 16 or 18 or 20 to one it would suggest that the owners and maybe the trainer don't fancy him much but it's kind of backing up what a lot of Henry was saying after the race. So I'm very interested in Chantreuse. I think uh, even though he doesn't, he lacks a small bit of experience in the sense that he's only ran three times over hurdles. And um, he's got good, bu- 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 he's won a, he won a bumper there last year. I just think he's going to stay on, stay on, stay on. And uh, I wouldn't rule out him finishing the first three or four in the betting. So he'd be my play at the moment, even at the current prices. Uh, I obviously like Barnes to pretend that as, as um, Brian said, on the top two in the market, um, like they're like Minella Crooner and Hillcrest, they're probably two worthy favorites to be up there. Um, Minella Crooner is what a lot of people have been describing as a wise guy's horse. Um, you know, staying on in the two mile six over Leopard Sound, he could step up in triple suit. Um, and he would really interest me, Minella Crooner, if he was nine or ten to one, but he's not, he's four to one favorite, so I'm going to take him on with Hillcrest. I'd be more inclined at the prices of the top two if you had to, if I had to back one, would be to back Hillcrest because I was so impressed with him last time out. He's four to one. Um, I just really can't see him not being in, in involved in the finish. So if you want the, the most likely winner for me would be Hillcrest. Um, but at the current prices, uh, Chantreuse will probably be the play for me still. Uh, again, like like I would love what do I want to run in this race now. I, I would buy a space on Winnie Munn's quotes as 100% he'll run in the Ballymore. But I would just say that his, his exchange price is interesting that he's still around the 29, 30 mark and then 16 to one no running no bet. I think he really suit three miles, one hundred percent. But as mentioned a few minutes ago, that his the ownership are the, the body more, so he will more than likely run there. But just what said, I mentioned. But yeah, for me, um, Sean Trues, yeah, Henry de Bromhead, Manella Indo won the same race. The Sean Trues won a Clamel, I think, and ended up winning the uh, the Albert Bart at fifty to one. We're not getting fifty one here, but uh, I think the cat's out of the bag a small bit. But I do, I do expect Sean Trues to run a big race. There is a horse in here, right? 
think could be half interesting uh, going up. It'll be his first try at three miles should he run in this race. I don't know if he's entered in for much more, but he costs 570,000. You can buy, you can get him back there for 25 to one in cl classic getaway. Like, I mean, I remember he, he was one of the, um, he was one of the, 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 the he was one of the Shively Park horses that got moved from Gordon Elliott's last year. And about this time last year, I like and, and talking to different people that I know from Gordon Elliott's, they were telling me this fella is an absolute airplane, that he's just an absolute monster. He won his bumper at Tipperary. Um, he won over her. He they threw him in then in a rated hurdle in Clonmel, then over two mile and three. He was bet by cashback, uh, probably just outpaced on that occasion. Didn't look like he, he really had the speed for that sort of trip. He went then to run over. He, he, he ran then in the maiden hurdle after that, probably to get a win into him. That was over two and a half. He he won it comfortably enough by about four lengths. Um, but the standard of it probably wasn't as good as what he got the last day. But I do think stepping up to three mile could be interesting. As I said, like he cost an absolute bomb of money. He's by getaway. Um, like he's a half brother to a three mile chase winner. So I mean he he, he has he definitely has pedigree there to stay a trip. Um and at the way that the trends in this race go, that horses at big prices have usually have a say in it. Like I mean, uh, he, he he looks kind of slow. He looks like he's going to be a sort of a stare in the making. And as we said already, the new course, the emphasis is all on stamina. If you you jump two hurdles in the last like seven furlongs, so it's more or less who 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 can seem to get to the who can seem to stay up the hill the best. So and even turning in. So I think at twenty twenty five or thirty, I think he's twenty five to one. I mean, I think he actually could be. I wouldn't say he's a player, but I think he's a nice bet. Yeah, and last thing, Sean, just like so, it's been a lot more graded horses the last couple of years, which suggests a lot of people are like, well, it's now turning into a graded race given the amount of good horses, I guess, hurdling. But I would also wouldn't rule out the the Barnstown lads, etc., given that uh, they've still been placed in those kind of races, if you know what I mean. Like thinking back to last year, like Vinny Day, I think is a high class uh, horse, and I think he'll run very well in the National Hunt Chase. I think he's a spring horse, so he, I think he was a good winner of it last year, but. Um, like there were some the horses in behind were very old school horses as well so just because a grade one like manel Inda won the gold cup so he was a grade one horse at 50 to one but there were horses in behind that ended up being not much but they really suited the trip so i think it's important to still look at the trends for this race and yeah i, I would still look at those kind of old school horses success, yeah for all the success last year um brian the for for the the likes of henry de bromhead obviously willie mullins um was a huge success for some of the smaller trainers in Ireland, the likes of Peter Fahey, Paul Hennessy, Gavin Cromwell won this week, you know, maybe not as household names as the others. Um, if Barden's town lad, lad does win for, for John McConaughey, it, it, it would have that added feeling to it as well that, you know, you're seeing uh, someone who maybe doesn't get the same headlines. You know, it's a difficult world out there at times when you have the big three in Ireland. Um, would it add something as well, that little bit of something? Absolutely, I'd say he'd, he'd, he'd say it, he'd say it, he'd probably be the biggest win of his career should Bardenstown lad manage to come in and, and and win this. I mean, as I said to you, I think he has five winners at Cheltenham over the la, uh, in in his career, um, but none of them have ever come at the at the Cheltenham Festival. He he seems to really love sending them over in October, November time. He seems to run a lot of horses in England. He he sends a lot of them to Scotland as well, up to Perth and up to Musselburgh to, to get wins into them. Um, like I mean, but he's a he's a great trainer. He he does he. he he, he knows how to get one ready and uh he um as i said to you it would be a massive i think it'd be huge it'd be a great story if um he manages to to, to send baron sound out here to win this race um it'd be great for the owners carolina hearn um you know is, it has a lot of horses with john mcconnell so um yeah i think you're right i think it will add a, a special feeling to it should um should this horse go and win but as i said to you, probably he'd probably tell you himself it'd probably be one of the biggest wins of his career should um should he get him over the line yeah, absolutely. For those listening uh, live, again, get your comments in. Make sure to subscribe. Get us across all our social social media platforms. Just before we go, Brian and Daniel will get an update. Any other kind of yeah. an eye on any other selections? I'll go to you, Dan. Yeah, so we should really do like a weekly anti-post. And it'll be, it's more not necessarily any horses I back, but just kind of updates. Like, it's a Gaelic Warrior is the favourite for the boot. I can't remember if we mentioned this horse last week. We probably didn't. Like, I haven't backed this horse. Or anything. Uh, but this horse is so well in. It's untrue. And just to explain that, he's, he's given a mark. Uh, should, should it, he's 122 or 124 uh, when he was, he was entered in the race a few weeks ago. And the Willie Mullins team. So he's entered in a race in England to see what the handicap would give him. And uh, the Willie Mullins team could not believe the the mark this horse has give, given his, his form in France. So he's been absolutely punted off the boards in the Boodles Juvenile Handicap Hurdle, which is arguably the most competitive, outside maybe the Carl Cup, the most competitive 
handicap hurdle at the Cheltenham Festival. So he's a four to one favorite, which is amazing. But uh, I don't know if I'd lay four to one to be honest with you. I don't know if I'd lay three or two to one if the money came. The Woody Mullins team are so com- are so confident there. He's got like a stone hand. Now that's not everything in the sense that he might not suit the track, might not suit the ground, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, but it's important to note that if you're playing someone the Boodles, you, you could be playing for places here with the Gator Quarry. And it's very on Woody Mullins like to target the Boodles, but also I know Saint Sam really won last year, but also the the team to be so confident. And usually when Woody Mullins team Put the boards off a horse it uh usually wins um other than that like th- there's not much else to change we kind of discussed a lot of the horses just kind of scrolling through like tiger old has been heavily backed in the cross country i think he might have been available at three or f- three three to one seventy two last week he's now into nine to four best price um it'll be he, he could go off six to four to the one favorite if the money comes from um i'm expecting a good performance from him i'd be, I'd be very surprised if he's been in the cross country to be honest with you buddy rich has been Punted off the board a lot in the Grand Annual. Um, I think he's eight to one best price. Uh, the, it, it, like I interest in the on the champion bumper. I think I am going to be on a, the team American Mike uh, here, given the prices at the moment. Three to one for the, the team Gravy. Well, team Gravy is the each way saver for those. Yeah, for, for those that weren't here last week, I think he's still available at one hundred fifty to one. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't even go to the anti post market on Bet365. Yeah, which is incredible. <laughs> I mean, if you if you somehow pull that off. Uh, don't worry, oh, I, don't I am on I, it. I don't think I will. <laughs> the Fasil Vega form, um, the, the horse in behind Fasil Vega, I can't remember now, ran yesterday and they did, didn't really frank the form. Uh, like, I'm not against Fasil Vega, I still can't get out of my head. I've never been in, in awe of a bumper horse in my life than when I was there at Leopardstown. But at the current prices, given the Codfathers, uh, Jamie Codd's comments, I'll probably go with American Mike there. Actually, I've already backed American Mike uh, for that race because I do think he'll shorten on the day and he might go off Two to one, nine to four against a five to four Facil Vega, and then everyone else is playing for that third spot. But um, yeah, and the Turners that we mentioned, it's not, as we mentioned top of the show, it's a lot likely now we're going to get Bob versus Gallop and Deschamps. I don't know, like I still, even though everything is telling me that Gallop is going to run here, I still don't know why they just don't go for the three mile here. Like I've no skin in the game with any anti coast best. I just think it's a far easier race. Monkfish ran in the same race as the Gallop and Deschamps ran this year and ended up in the three mile race. I still hold your best there. I don't know if we'll get that match. Henry de Bromhead's not backing down. He's saying if they want to take on Bob and the Turners, so be it. Uh, I and I'd be. I I was, I was with Gallivan last week. The more I think about it, I think Bob, given the stable form, if Henry's back in form, I think Bob, uh, it could really put it up to Gallop and the champ. It, it, it'll be a match there in the Turners, but something's telling me that either Lahan Press will move to the, the three mile, or maybe Gallop and the champ will still go three mile. Bob Ollinger could still, of course, step up to three miles, but I think he he's going to hold his ground in the Turners. I think Henry's a very old school trainer. He'll just put. He's happy to take on the horses, like, and his comments have been great on that. Uh, one horse in the pretemps that um, I was only thinking the other day. It was actually I actually heard the case for this horse, and I had to go back to make sure that he he was that price that the person said he was. And since then, I, I still haven't backed it, but I probably will back at anti post here very shortly. No runner about bet is Cider Burley for the pretemps because. I think he's like off a mark maybe i think it's three pounds higher than when he won the race he's won the race two years in a row uh before he ran in the stairs now that's second to flooring porter is looking great now considering flooring porter is still the favorite for the stairs this year and apparently did a really good piece of work in ferry house that is it's kind of well documented on twitter for uh, flooring porter that is so i think if you're looking for another handicap horse 10 to 1 on side of early in the pretends is probably a really good bet because he could go off four to five to one favorite no issue at all if the gordon Eddie team um feel he's in good form last thing i'd say on that race is gordon has another six horses in the race so they're probably the six other ones to be given his record in the race thank you for that dan uh we'll go to you brian <laughs> any other kind of selections or any horse to keep an eye on yeah uh, yeah i have two um i think that buddy rich is the it could potentially be the best handicapped horse in the grand annual should he go to it he hasn't um obviously hasn't got his mark yet but um i tipped him up in the meat chronicle this week i think he's a cracking price i backed him a 10 to 1 last week um his owner got very i was talking to his owner in the pub on friday night he, he gets very flustered when people tell him his horse is going to win a Cheltenham. he feels he's under an awful lot of pressure and um, but i mean you got to go through his form he, he he posted his highest race and post race rating at Cheltenham when he was second behind third time lucky i mean third time lucky ran edward stone to four lengths at, at warwick the last day i mean the form is not that bad he was bet four five he was bet five lengths by dun vegan in the in the dan moore um he like it, it done vegan ran Shaq, well, obviously was second behind Shaq on Borsois. I mean, he's an Irish rating of 138. He's probably liable to about five or six pounds off the British handicapper. But I mean, the last six of the last 10 winners or seven of the last 10 winners have had a rating between 140 and 150 in the grand annual. Um, um, he's had six starts over, over fences. Um, the novices have a great record in the, um, 
at, in Cheltenham handicaps. So I think he's an absolute cracking bet. I think the cat is out of the bag a little bit though at the price, but I think he's he's still he's he's in my opinion the most likely winner, and he could be Gordon Elliott's potential only runner in the race. He said he's only he probably he could run one or maybe two, but Buddy Rich looks like he could go off a shorter price, but I think he will win. Um, and the other one actually is funnily enough is actually in the bumper I backed it the other day like I know that, that, that this Grievy thing and all that like in Graham but Grievy's the, the other horse that, that Grievy's owner runs Redemption Day I couldn't, I still can't get over the price and that bit nice bumper yesterday the two horses that were running in the race were bet by Fasa Vega and Redemption Day Um, you know he, the winner of that nice bumper yesterday and um, music drive was bet by redemption day by four lengths now i know redemption didn't even come out of second gear beat sangor San, sandor clegane or sandor clegane yesterday obviously the fasa vega form you know as you said it probably wasn't franked uh you know i think that when you look at it like that i mean i'm not saying it's it's gospel but i mean at the price is six or seven to one i think that he's a cracking bet and to me he was my most impressive winner at at Fair leopardstown over the course of the bumpers that that week you know so um they're my two Super. Thanks for that, Brian. We've got a comment in there for you. Can Bean will give us one for Carlisle today. That's from David Murta. And we've got Shane the Hammer Hogan saying, be so bright in Ireland having one, two, three, four in the Supreme, the first four. And if it is, and if that is true, I'll, I'll, I'll be texting you, Shane, but I'll also, you'd be worried for uh, for the English contingent. It well, would be exactly, exactly that. If Constitution Hill can get into the first four in the Supreme, given how impressive he's been this season, then uh, you're dead right, Sean. It's going to be an absolute massacre. Yeah, it could be a bloodbath. But that's all from us here on the Tackle. Sky Club. Hill will win Carlisle today. There you go. <laughs> what, what, what time? In, in you know? 20, past, 20 past three. 20 past three. I'll try and get the pod up. Four, around four, to, four to one. Yeah, this will be out as a podcast after. If you're listening, it's one. Apologies. Be, at Beano Dowling. Follow him on Twitter. Yeah. Go easy on from from all of us here at the Tackling Sport Podcast. Thank you very much for watching, whether it's been on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, or Twitter. Remember, get your comments in under the YouTube video. We'll 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 reply. We'll get some interaction going. We'll see what people's best fancies are for the week ahead. We've had two winners last week. There, Irish Field, Cheltenham Magazine Magazine, courtesy of Ronan Groom, and all at Irish Field. So that's our competition. We have two winners. They'll be getting that magazine out during the week. Um, but my thanks to Brian Dowling, as always, the King of Trim and the, our resident Cheltenham expert. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, lads. And, of course, my brother, Daniel. Yeah, and it's important to mention, Brian had a great record last year on his Cheltenham tips in the Antipost previews, so pay particular attention to what Brian said on the podcast. And not no necessarily pressure. what I'm saying, but go on. No pressure. No pressure. No. Precious for tires, as they say. But that's all from us at the Tackling Sport Podcast. Check us out on social media, interact with us, and we'll see you next week as we get a week closer to the Cheltenham Festival and a week closer to the Summer of Sport. Thanks for listening. See you.